I like to say Shalom to all my Israelite brothers and sisters, those that are near and those that are afar off. We have arrived at the location to where we are going to join our brother and our sister together in holy, holy matrimony. That thing said holy matrimony. That means when each time you start talking about something holy, you're talking about something to come straight from the mouth of the Most High. And so I uh, just wanted to take this little time out just to point out a couple of key things. want to give some encouragement to our brothers and sisters who are already married. And I'd say this, and I tell it to anybody. I tell it to my children, and uh, and I tell it to all of my brothers and sisters that seek to be married. Marriage is gangster. It's gangster work. It ain't made for everybody. Everybody ain't built for marriage. Even though the Most High instituted it and made it for everybody, everybody ain't built for it. And so, um, one of the reasons why everybody ain't built for it is because Everybody ain't seeking to please the most high. But for those that are seeking to please the most high, and then you have spouse, uh, you have husband, you have a wife, it's gangster because it requires hard work. Um, there are many different things that we can face or experience in life as a married couple. And the work is not always hard from the standpoint of husbands getting along with their wives. It's not always hard from that standpoint. Sometimes it gets difficult because of the things that a husband and a wife have to face together. That when they enter into a storm, they enter into a storm together as a couple. Though sometimes the storms may be great, as long as they remain intact and keep that in mind, that they're able to withstand whatever thing comes against them. Now we know for the man, the Bible says, he who findeth a wife findeth a good thing, and he obtains the most highest favor. And that is the equivalent for all of our brothers and sisters that have a, have a fear of marriage. Don't you understand that there is no wind that can blow into a marriage that the most high won't do you a favor? He said, because you went and you honored my word and you sought to do this thing and get this thing done, hey man, guess what? I'm going to do you a favor. No matter what it is that you need in life, I'll do you a favor. If you and your wife having problems, I'll do you a favor. Just come to me. I'll do you a favor. I'll fix her. I'll fix you. I'll fix you if you the problem. If you having problems with what I told you as it relates to taking care and caring for your wife and caring for your children through the uh, financial means and not having enough or the loss of job, say come to me. I'll do you a favor because I commanded you to do these things. But I, told, I didn't tell you that things would happen, but I'm telling you that when things do happen, I'll do you a favor. And because you have honored me and taken a wife unto yourself, I give you a never ending supply of favors. And so it's time out for brothers and sisters finding any kind of reason that they can to loophole their way out of their marriage when the Most High have made a never ending supply of favors available. And we seem to forget some of those words that we say. We promise to do these things so long as God help us. And that is them favors that's kicking in. Every time we need something, the Most High said, you come to me and I'll do you a favor because that's what I promised you when you took a wife. And so uh, marriage is an honorable thing in all. According to Hebrews 13 chapter, marriage is honorable in all and the bed is undefiled. It means that the bed is clean because to be undefiled means that it's pure, means that it's holy, means that it's sanctioned, it's set apart. He said, but harmongers and fornicators, the most high going to judge. You know why? That's because you're jumping into a bed that is dirty, a bed that is unclean. I mean, a bed that is, uh, is not clean. And so you can't really see the dirt and the filth of the uh, defiled thing with the physical eye. But for every man that has a woman that he can't call his wife, every time you climb into that bed, you climb into a spiritual bed of defilement. And so you may not see the STDs there. If somebody backed the truck up and then emptied the trash 
a trash truck full of garbage into a bed where you had garbage and worms and maggots and, and all types of uh, nasty things in there. You wouldn't go and climb in that bed because you can see that defilement. You can see that it's nasty. But this is what it is when you're fornicating. When you're fornicating. And many brothers and sisters are fornicating right now. And don't look at it as such a bad thing. Look at it as the Most High's love challenging you to do things in a manner that is wise and in a manner that is right. If you wouldn't climb into a bed that a trash truck emptied all of its contents in, then why would you climb into a bed of a woman that is not your wife? Why would you allow a man to climb into a bed when he don't have no desire or he can't even fathom the ideal of making you a wife? You see? And so we can't see the defilement of the unholy bed with the physical eye. But we see the defilement of the unholy bed make itself manifest as herpes crawl out of the bed, as uh, gonorrhea crawl out of the bed, syphilis crawls out of the bed, AIDS crawls out of the bed. All of these things are already in the defiled bed even before we get in it. And so there is an importance. There are many people that dishonored the Most High's word as it relates to the holy union of marriage. Only to live their life now with, with, with pestilence that cleave to their flesh. Many people have crawled into an unlawful and a defiled bed only now to have to be on medication so that they can try to live because they have contracted the AIDS virus. That they have to go to the doctor and get prescribed penicillin because you got leakage and you got all of these different things of defilement because of this particular issue. The Most High called us to greater. And so when, when we start looking at things, and then we're always going to go back to the beginning. You see, I'm not talking about what happened as a result of man's sin. Where from there, you understand what I'm saying? He began to forsake the one wife union that the Most High had gave him in the beginning. The Messiah reminded them, the children of Israel... He said, have you not read? I'm fully aware of what your forefathers is doing. And I don't knock no man for what they're doing. You can have one wife or you can have ten wives. What you do with your life is up to you. So we don't knock people that have polygamous relationships. That is their right. They have that choice. They have that choice to make in the life that they're living. And nobody can take that choice away from them. But I would like to use the words of the Messiah as he dealt with the children of Israel who had became witnesses of the things that their forefathers was doing as it related to marriage. He said, have you not read in the beginning? It was not so. You couldn't just put your wife away for anything. He said, in the beginning, it was not so. He said, for God made them male and female. And he said, no longer shall the two be two, but the two shall now be one flesh. They shall now be one flesh. That's what he did in the beginning. We know that that's what he did when he made Adam, when he formed Eve from the breast of Adam. We know that that's how he did it. We know that that's how it operated. And Adam seen that one woman that the Most High had brought to him. And he said, good golly molly. Wow, I can't believe this. She's bad. She's awesome. She's, this is the greatest thing I've ever I've seen. i ever seen before. But she looked like me. This is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Therefore, she, she, she shall be called woman. Because she was taken out of the man. And that is how the Most High created us in the beginning. See, too many times our brothers and sisters, they don't want to skip past the beginning and then go into the places of our forefathers once they had already fallen into sin. Then they begin to justify things that were against the original purpose that the Most High created, the man and the woman and the marriage union. You see? And so we don't get into those meaningless arguments and those meaningless fights. But we know that our father Jacob had four wives, but he only loved one. He only loved one. And he worked seven years to get that one. And, but the first one that he got, he was tricked into getting her. She became the mother. She became the mother of the tribe of Judah. 
The tribe of Judah don't want to identify with the fact that our father despised our mother. Because our mother was not the woman that he loved. and She was not the woman that he worked for. She was a woman that was put in his bosom from the, uh, from the guise of deception. And though he worked another seven years to lay hold on, though he worked another seven years to lay hold on that woman that he loved, he still had the responsibility of caring for the one that he didn't want to have anything to do with. When we start looking at our father Abraham, even though he went into Hagar, and even though they produced a seed, Hagar was never his choice, for he loved Sarai. Now we're looking at these things from a biblical standpoint, and we're looking at the things that our forefathers had done, and the different areas that our forefathers uh, did things that would cause them to have go outside of what the Most High had originally done. And so, you know, I'm always going to go back to the beginning. Because I, I believe in my soul. Yeah, I told him to bring something so I can take care of that. Yeah. So I, I, I'm going to always stick with what the Most High did in the beginning. See, ain't nobody in the, on the planet can fight against what the Most High did in the beginning. Though I don't knock brothers and sisters for the choices that they make throughout the course of their life because they have a right. To, they have a right. If a man chooses to have three or four wives, who am I to tell him anything different? That's his choice. That's his right. If the women that he is dealing with are pleased to deal with him in that matter, that's their choice. That's their right. Nobody can take that away from them. But I'm always going to go back to the beginning, how the Most High made and created the marriage union in the first place. That's what I'm going to do. So it don't come as no strike against the brothers that have entered into different types of relationships. They have those choices. However, nobody can undo what the Most High done. In the beginning, nobody can undo, undo that. We have some of them same fights when it came down to eating the flesh and the blood. I don't tell people that because I don't eat meat. My choice not to eat meat was purely based upon health issues and the things I was experiencing with my body. However, ain't nobody on the planet going to be able to undo the first diet that the Most High gave Adam and Eve when he first created them. I don't care what's contained in Exodus concerning sacrifice, what's contained in Leviticus concerning sacrifice, or what's contained in the book anywhere else. All of those things are a result of the fallen nature of Adam and Eve, and then our forefathers begin to do things that was against what the Most High did originally. And it's the same way when it comes to marriage. Even though our forefathers had the right to take these things, because sometimes during the preservation of the nation of Israel, men would fall in battle. And then the wives that they left behind, they had to be cared for. So they would be able to take their brother's wife and then go into her and produce a seed should he die without children. It was a preservation type of thing that caused men to have to do these things. Some men made the choices to do it, and then some men of our forefathers of old they didn't choose to do it. We had one brother that, that, that had the responsibility to take his brother's wife, yet he didn't want to produce a seed in her. And so every time that he would have sex with her, he would pull himself out and he would spill his seed on the ground. That became a great sin to the Most High because there were laws that were put in place purely for the preservation of Israel. And this is how many of our forefathers ended up with multiple wives our forefather our father Jacob he never chose the other wives he never chose them he chose one and then he was deceived in taking the eldest daughter first which was Leah which out of the loins would come the tribes of Judah and he despised that woman but he still had love for that one and upon getting the two of them when he got ready to leave their younger sisters were given to the two wives as handmaids henceforth now he had four but none of those other three were his choice
They came by way of a father's payment or a father could do things to, to free himself from the responsibility of caring for those daughters and put those daughters in the hands of a man that would. These are just some simplistic things that we are using in the Bible to draw some lines of distinction between the holy thing that the Most High established in the beginning. Though we don't knock or tell anybody what they cannot do as it relates to wives because we see that these things exist existed in the scripture and if you see a thing exist in the scripture you can't fight against people that's doing that just like i don't fight against people about eating flesh and blood because i'll do that they can find sacrifice in the bible but my thing is that i keep it real and i'm going back to the beginning because our number one issue is to seek and serve the most high in the fullness of his commandment that he gave us on the day that we were created so, marriage is honorable in all. The bed's undefiled. There's Sweetie Pie. Sweetie Pie, you got anything you want to sprinkle on some of the young ladies as it relates to, you know, encouragement of marriage or, or whether they're going to stay in a place of fornication? Or, I mean, you might even want to tell you a story, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know. So you got this camera on? Yeah. Oh, so you got this camera Spotlight on, on Sweetie Pie. Shabbat <laughs> shalom, everyone. Yeah. I thank the Most High for this uh, gorgeous day and to be able to witness and be a part of a union of a couple that wants to do the right thing up under the Father's laws and commandments. And as far as telling the story, not yet. Well, I'm going to say that for when we do the video. We're going to okay. do the video on marriage later. Baby. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I hope everybody have a uh, blessed Shabbat. All right, all right. Well, y'all heard it from the voice of one sweetie pie, one sweetie you pie. On yep. So you know that's what it is. You know, I, I get too many. I get too many people that ask me the question. You know what I'm saying? The sisters want to hear from sweetie pie. They always hear from me. The brothers always hear from me. But we can't forget about our sisters because our sisters carry the weight of what it is to be married. That's why the Most High made them, made y'all as a help. If we could do it all by ourselves, it wouldn't be no need for him to bring you along. You understand what I'm saying? So he said, I will create a help me for you. That, that, that says something all by itself. That says something all by itself right there because there wasn't nothing plural in there. But I ain't going outside of the garden. See, when we start going outside in the garden, we can heap up all kind of reasons to do whatever it is that we want to do when we go outside of the garden. But I want to keep us locked up in the garden because in the garden is where we remain to be the people that the Most High was looking to produce the godly offspring in the earth. You understand what I'm saying? So we got people doing all sorts of things and doing things and doing things that, that mimic marriage but really ain't marriage at all because marriage is the union between one woman and one man. That's what marriage is according to the scripture. That's according to the scripture. Now, so, but, you know, as we say that even though we make these videos, we don't want our brothers to be offended. That, that, that have a desire to have multiple wives because it's through the multiple wives that the nation of Israel was built, was birthed into existence and was incubated into existence in Israel. That's why Pharaoh came and said, look, the children of Israel are multiplying far more faster than we are multiplying. He said, every time I, I have one baby, they're having six, seven babies. Well, that's because the men of Israel might have had four or five wives, might have been walking around with big bellies and pregnant all at the same time. But there was a purpose behind that because he promised Abraham that he would make him the father of many nations. And so there were certain things that came with the customs of Israel that caused Israel's numbers to be greatly increased because of this issue right here. But there is a major difference between the incubation period. See, once a child is born prematurely and they put him in the incubator, incubator so that he can gain the strength and become the, the come to his full full capacity. Hey, once he comes to his full capacity, he's taken out of the incubator and now he walks in the earth like other children, plays like other children. But during those infant stages, um, where he is not fully developed, he goes through a period of incubation. And this is what it was when we was in Egypt. When we was in Egypt, it was an incubation period because we went into Egypt 70 people. 
but we came out this vast number of people and through our incubation stages that the Most High was building a nation inside of the empire of, uh, of Egypt. But when our forefathers came out of Egypt, they came out of Egypt as a full functional nation of people. And it, even though it was part of the culture, to have multiple wives. It was not a thing that was mandated within the culture because every man didn't have that. But there were certain men that were chosen for it. We look at the story of Hannah and Penina and uh, Abimelech who had two wives. One of his wives was producing uh, numbers of children at a rapid pace and one of his wives was barren. I would like to think that the wife that was barren, it was something that was dealing with her that caused her to have to be cared for by Abimelech. And so Abimelech would give her a double portion of the physical things of the earth because she was a woman of a sorrowful spirit and could not produce children and the one that could produce children was always on her nose on her nerves but one day we know the story that Hannah went into the temple and began to weep and begin to wail and begin to cry out unto the Most High because she couldn't produce no offspring and the Most High opened up her womb and then gave she gave birth to Samuel the prophet who was committed to the Most High uh, and his work for all the days of his life. This is, you talking about, you talking about when a man loves a woman. When a man loves a woman, she can do no wrong. I know you got that on me again. He'll trade the world for the good thing he's found. <laughs> if she is bad, he can't see it. Yeah. Is she playing him for a fool? He's the last one to know. Heaven knows. <laughs> See, tell, I'm telling you, man. So we can find these things in the scripture, you know. We'll find these things in the scripture because we got to bring back the love. You understand what I'm saying? We got to bring back the love. And we need some of our brothers to be honest. We need some of our brothers to just start being honest. You know, some of our brothers have experienced some of these type of relationships that we are talking about. And even though everything that ain't glitter ain't gold, but they won't come back and tell you, man, I had them three women in my house. Man, they was driving me completely crazy. Every time I turn around, they was on me or they was arguing amongst each other, fighting me. See, ain't nobody going to come and be real and tell you the real truth about the one. Because you always have one woman whose love far surpasses the love of other women and see that woman right there you understand can get territory don't nobody ever come back and tell no stories about how women can get out of order when we in situations like that if it can happen with one woman and one husband as a wife what make you think it won't happen to a husband when he got three four five wives oh we may come on Facebook and we may paint the picture to the world like everything is wonderful but just going home to one wife go home to one wife on a daily basis Sometimes creates a headache because that's just it. You're still two separate people. You just become one in the spirit and in the union of marriage. But you have to deal with things on a daily basis. You understand what I'm saying? And so if it's like that with one, guess what? You times that by three or four. And then you can see some of these brothers have some major headaches, but they won't come back and tell the story to encourage many brothers that's only looking at the ideal of having multiple wives. Sometimes they need to come and tell them stories and tell them stories to them brothers. Hey, look, you got to be built for this. You got to be chosen for this. There have to be something in you that the Most High put there that had to be far greater than lust or than sex. There have to be something far greater for you to be able to do this because many of our brothers just have a desire to have more than one wife simply because they can find it in the Bible or it was a part of our culture. But many of our brothers that have already been there, they know that everything that glitter ain't gold and they could come back and share some of those stories with some of the brothers that don't fully understand the polygamous unions between a man and multiple wives. They could come back and share some stories to discourage anybody that don't have the proper understanding about wanting to do that. Many brothers ain't even learned how to care for the one wife that they have in the way that the Most High said. The, uh, the Messiah said and once I, uh, even 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 I, even even Paul said that you know man should love his wife like Hamashiach loved the church and gave himself up for her. 
that he may sanctify it and wash her with the washing of the water of the Most High. This is encouragement for our brothers and sisters who have wives or have women that don't seem that they have grown to the same place. He said it's your responsibility. You have to sacrifice your own life for that woman and you have to wash her with the water of the word. And to wash somebody is a process. It may, it's the process of life. You might have to start off by washing the hands. But then when you get the hands clean, you find the arms are dirty. And you got to wash the horns. And then you find out that the rest is dirty. You got to wash her with the water of the word from all of the contamination and corrupt and the abuse that they experienced previously. And see, brothers don't know what women, what our sisters have been through. But we do know one thing. We do know that they will have to be washed with the water of the word. And that's a lifetime process of washing. It tell you that you don't always agree on everything. Some things require sacrifice on both parts. It's been said, submit yourselves one to another. Every time we turn around, we got brothers on Facebook talking about wives supposed to be submissive. Wives supposed to be submissive. Well, you supposed to be submissive too. The Most High said, submit yourself one to another. In the fear of the Most High, because you are joint heirs. In the same way that we want them to have a submissive spirit toward us, we first have to have a submissive spirit toward the Most High. We have to have a, a, a submissive spirit. When we can have a submissive spirit um, for the Most High, then that automatically brings us to, to a place to where we can submit before our wives. We know what he told Abraham. Abraham, hearken to the voice of your wife. Close your mouth sometime. I know you're the head, you're the leader, but close your mouth sometime. I put something in this woman that's to bless you. Shut up and hearken unto the voice of your wife. She's telling you the right thing. And many times men get offended when their wives get the opportunity to speak up and speak up on their behalf. They are genuinely trying to help you. But we ain't learned the principles of submission ourselves. These are all of the things that we have to deal with, with the holy union of marriage. If y'all think for one minute that Sweetie Pie don't walk me upside the head every now and then, y'all sadly mistaken. That's what I'm talking about. You need to shut up sometime. You just think you know everything. Sometime you need to just shut up and listen. And it didn't happen not too long ago as we was trying to find a place to this park. And I'm saying, well, it's got to be over here. It's got to be over here. It's got to be over here. And Sweetie Pie looked out the window and said, there it is over there. I told you to turn down that street there. Sometime y'all just listen. So... <laughs> That's marriage. Any man that have a woman that he can't listen to, he gonna be in trouble. He gonna be in trouble. So when we seeking to please the Most High, there are a multiplicity of things that we have to learn, but we learn them together. Don't no man know the grand sum total of everything. That's why the Most High give him a help me. Now when you start analyzing that word help me, let's put it in layman terms where you can understand. You have the CEO of a company, then you have the president of the company, and you have the supervisors and the managers of a company. But what outnumbers all of them is the help, which is also known as the employee. If you want to see what kind of company a company is, you let the employees walk out on strike, fed up at the leadership, and declare that I'm not going along with this mess anymore. And watch what happened to the company. Then You see, the company can't survive without the help, and that's how it is with marriage when it comes to the wife that the Most High gives us as men. You see, he gives them to us so that they can help us to further our purpose in the things of the Most High. But you let that wife go on strike. You let that wife say, I done had it. I'm tired. You thought that man was everything? Let's take a look and see if he was everything. Let's take a look and just see. Talking about the virtuous woman who brings her food from afar, who rises while it's yet night, who clothes her house, who takes care of her children, who has a heart and compassion for the poor, who does all of these things. It ain't said nothing about this man, did He said her husband is known at the gates when he sit amongst the elders. Now here you got a joker that is able to do nothing but sit around at the gate and chit chat with the elders and he is known because of what this woman do and if he lost that woman you understand what I'm saying he wouldn't even be noticed he wouldn't even be known God knows he wouldn't be able to sit among the elders because they understand the principles of a holy union so that's how that go and many of you brothers know you may go on Facebook, you may teach a lesson, you may talk till you're blue in the face, but I guarantee you, you let that woman that's in the shadows get from up under you, and we'll see you for what you really are. See, this woman was sustaining 
that man. She stained, sustained him. She kept him looking good. Like my wife keep me looking good. I can get out and go out of town, and by the time I get out of town, I done forgot everything. I don't got one sock, done forgot to bring me a change of drawers, uh, done left my beard oil, ain't got, you know, but you know what? My wife makes sure that everything I need is in the bag or whatever it is. But I'm just showing you the differences because many times we just, it's just like that, man. It's just like that. So. So all praises to the Most High Heavenly Father. Heaven rejoices when, when our brother sees something in the woman that causes him to want to honor the Most High by making him a wife. Is it easy? No, it ain't easy because the Most High wants us to be dependent upon him. That's why he said a threefold cord is not quickly broken. You have the husband, you have the wife, and then you have the Most High that is intertwined, keeping the two of them together. Ain't no marriage could be uh, sustain without uh, the most highs without doing it in the way that the most high deemed for it to be done but even right out the gate you see I don't knock nobody else for what they do but my sweetie pie you know when I seen her and I asked I said I walked through three and a half years of holding my own nuts in my hand, abstinence, abstaining from sex because I wanted to make the right choice. I'd already been through 20 years of marriage that didn't work, and I didn't want to make the same mistake again. And when I seen my sweetie pie, it's, I said, that's the type of woman I'd like to have. And the most high said, oh, you can have her. Because one day I heard a voice say, anybody that rejects me, you got to reject. And that made me grow hopeless because the vast majority of women that I was associated with would reject the most high. But boy, I was in that nightclub having me a glass of wine and sitting out there and when I ran into Sweetie Pie, I said, now that's the type of woman that I'd like to have. I was made up mine. I didn't want another woman out of church because I was married to my last wife and she was singing in the choir and praising the most high on Sunday and then in the courthouse trying to get divorced on Monday and I declared I didn't never want another woman in church that had a made up mind and she wasn't going to do nothing that the most high had told her to do and so they gave me i said i'd like to have he said well you can have her you know what that said to me that said that she ain't gonna reject me and she she ain't gonna reject me and so i'm telling you out front that you can have her i went back the next day i snatched sweetie pie off that bar stool and she's been following me ever since and she's been the best thing one of the best things outside of my kids in this life in this air that i'm breathing she's been the best thing that ever happened to me because of her i am known all over the world because of her this ministry is coming out of me because of the experiences that we have faced and the trials that we have been through leaning to the word and depending on the word have caused all of these good things to flow out of but it all began with that woman so brothers let's do the right thing and you sisters, let's do the right thing. Ain't no perfect men out here. Ain't no perfect men. Oh, I'd like to have a man like that. I'd like to have a man. That, I'd like to have one of them mores, one of them bitches, one of them, one of them brothers out there that's teaching. Hey, ain't no man like that. You take the man that you got because if he's a raggedy man, that only give you the, uh, the opportunity to analyze what type of help meet you are. You have the power to, to transform that man from where he's at into whatever you want him to be. I can you show me a, a weak man that gets a woman that understand these principles and she'll take that joker who everybody despises and call weak. She'll take that joker the next time you see him. He'll be suited and booted. He'll go from jeans, t-shirts, and tennis shoes to gaiters and suits and beaver hats which will become his marital tools and he will shine like new money before the brethren. And guess what? They don't have nobody to praise for but that woman. And then you can find another man who's a stiff neck man that think he got it all going on all together. Well, the Most High got something for him too because he'll let a woman that don't know how to use that power come into his life life and that thing will rob and rape him and you show me a stiff necked man I'll show God send a woman his way that'll break him down from everything that he got he'll lose his money he'll lose his house he'll lose his car he'll even lose his mind all because we don't understand these principles so you know you out here fornicating and all of that stuff repent ask the most high for forgiveness 
He who can't rule his spirit is like a city with no walls. You got to be able to control your hormones. Get control of your hormones. You don't let no woman just puppeteer you as a man because she got a big booty and got cleavage showing and she can twerk. And I, You don't let no woman control you. Men got to stand up and be men. Be the men of God that we're called. Everybody want to claim to be Israel. Well, if you're going to be Israel, you must do what Israel do. You must do what Israel's supposed to do. All praises to the Most High Heavenly Father.